Welcome back to our program. I'm your host, Ray Guo. We will continue our conversation with Professor Lin Baoshu, uh, uh, Dr. Paul Lin, who is the former Director General of the Information Communication Research Laboratories here at ITRI here in Taiwan. Uh, Dr. Lin, we know it's, it's quite remarkable when I you know, learn from your CV that in addition to your capacity with the Government you know, Research Institute and uh, also with the National Jiao Tong University, that you also a uh, global strategic advisor to a number of leading international technology firms like IBM, like uh, 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 Intel, uh, MIPS. How do you try to coordinate and manage all these different you know, capacities that you play professionally? Okay. I think uh, one of the most experience I have is I have been working for uh, American company, yes, European company, and Taiwan company. Okay, <laughs> good. I spent 16 years in the United States, work for a company like uh, AT and T Bell Lab, okay, Boeing company, mm -hmm. and work for European company, so called Philips yes. Research, mm -hmm. Philips Electronics, mm -hmm. and uh, in Taiwan, I've been work for E3. Yes, so I have a global environment, mm -hmm. and. Uh, in order to work together with Intel, IBM, you need a global ex exposure. Of course. And for the Intel, we mainly involve in a couple of things. One is uh, uh, symmetric multiprocessor development okay. in the early uh, 1990s. 90s. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. involved in the WiMAX development for the current stage. Yes. And uh, for IBM, mm -hmm. we involved in, in, at ICL, we involved in the uh, healthcare, mm -hmm. telecare development. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, since IBM tried to explore their uh, cloud computing mm -hmm. for service industry. Yes. And the first thing they chose is the telecare. And uh, since we have been working together with Department of Health mm -hmm. for the Telecare project yes. at ICL, mm -hmm. so they, the IBM research tried to establish the research in the service industry for, for mm -hmm. cloud computing, mm -hmm. and they come to ICL mm -hmm. to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Last December, they formally announced to form the uh, IBM research in services in Taiwan. Okay. Dr. Lin, we understand that all these different, you know, professional capacities that you have assume, you know, assumed in the past, that uh, it is, you know, sometimes a challenge to try to create a win-win solution for the projects that you are confronted with. You know, sometimes, you know, I mean, some of the technological breakthroughs may not be applicable in a very commercial sense for the industry. And how do you then, in your capacity as their global strategic advisor, how do you create those win-win situation for everybody concerned? How do you do it? Okay, it's, it's a tough question. <laughs> okay, uh, I think uh, to encourage the global company to have R&D center in Taiwan, mm -hmm. it's a trade-off. You, so you want to increase the job market yes. for local people. Mm -hmm. But you also have to take care of the domestic industry. Yes. And uh, how do how do you convince them? How to convince them? Mm -hmm. It's it's also a tough part. Mm. Because one way you like to have uh, increase your technology de depth, mm -hmm. and you also do want to increase the job market. Yes. But domestic or local company mm -hmm. they lose talent. But if you consider the local company, they just want to use the, our people for the OEM, ODM. Mm -hmm. you, you, we lose the uh, competitive edge. Mm -hmm. So you want to have the more, you, you want to have more advanced, more talented people work in something that's more challenging for them. Mm -hmm. So government, particularly in Ministry of Economic Affairs, mm -hmm. they have the policy to encourage mm -hmm. 
-hmm. global company to have R&D center in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And simply in, at E3, uh, we follow the uh, policy and uh, to make it happen. Yes. And uh, Dr. Lin also was very remarkable that in addition to the leading international technological firms, that you have also been instrumental in trying to develop some collaborative projects among the leading universities around the world, including Harvard University, uh, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and also Carnegie Mellon University. How do you do it? And also, what were some of the collaborative you know, projects collaborative project that you've been able to achieve? Okay. Uh, I think uh, I contribute more in the academia institute like uh, MIT and, and uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Yes. Simply I know uh, several professors mm -hmm. at MIT and uh, at CMU. Okay. And uh, uh, for MIT, we know the professor and research scientist. Mm -hmm at uh, the laboratory called Lab for Computer Science, mm -hmm. LCS, now called, so-called C-Cell. Okay. Computer Science and AI Laboratory okay. at MIT. All right. I know several professors there. All right. A professor like Victor Zhu okay. he is very good at uh, speech recognition using software approach or uh, dialogue system mm -hmm. for speech recognition. Okay. And, uh, at Carnegie Mellon University, mm -hmm. I know several professors in the IC design house mm -hmm. in the, for the IC design expertise mm -hmm. and also for the multimedia uh, system development. Okay. One is Professor Rod Rudenbach, the other one is Professor Chen. Oh, okay. By the way, those two professors also the co advisor of my son's PhD thesis. Oh, that's terrific. Yes. Okay, so. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a uh, uh, so-called Itri lab at CMU oh, okay. and Itri lab at MIT. Yeah, I would suppose then, Dr. Lin, that you have been able to send a lot of talents in Taiwan to go and do a short-term research project yes. or for advanced training at those leading universities. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Mostly at MIT and Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and also Stanford, Harvard. Harvard and Stanford is less than uh, MIT. MIT and CMU. Okay. Because CMU and MIT, mm -hmm. they have more uh, technology development mm -hmm. than Stanford and uh, Harvard. Of course. Yeah, because they have more mm -hmm. research scientists related to computer science and electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. Stanford is a tough university to work because of the intellectual properties yes. issue. Yeah. They, Always. they they don't share the intellectual property yeah. with the other agencies. Uh, agency. Okay. But MIT and the CMU okay. they are willing to co own okay. the intellectual property with the participant. Okay. Or partnership. Okay. And uh, what is also interesting is that, uh, Dr. Lin, you mentioned earlier about having some of these leading international technologi you know, technological firms coming to Taiwan and set up their research and development center. Yes. And uh, we have talked about the, you know, the potential for Taiwan, you know, our government often referred to as the regional you know, research and development R&D center for all of Asia. And uh, how would you think that Taiwan as a you know, future you know, possible destination for the R&D Center uh, regionally. What will be some of the advantages that we have? What will be some of the you know, elements that we're able to attract those international firms and set up the R&D centers here in Taiwan? Taiwan is a country with trust and freedom. Yes. And uh, compared with mainland China, Mm -hmm. I think we have this kind of advantage. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. also our professor at university and the student graduate from uh, major national university. Yes. Those are the talent that global company are in this center. Yeah. They would like to attract. Of course. Uh, particularly the, the company who want to have business in mainland China mm -hmm. from 
Europe, from United North America, or from Japan. Yes. They will uh, go through Taiwan as the step stone okay. to go to mainland China. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, I would like to see more global view mm -hmm. for the university graduate student okay. instead of isolate themselves from the international mm -hmm. uh, arena. Okay. Do you then foresee more cooperation you know, between, for example, E3 in Taiwan and also corresponding agencies, your know, research agencies on the mainland? I think that's the uh, advantage for Taiwan yes. in order to differentiate uh, or in order to launch global standard, for example. Yes. If we want to have a Chinese uh, mm -hmm. world, yes. Standard. Okay. I think to leverage the market yes. of mainland China is very important. Yes, we need to get involved. For example, in the cell phone, yeah. uh, China Mobile yes. Communication Corporation, Zhongguo Yi Dong, yes. they have uh, 500 million subscribers. Yes. With that one, yeah. it's enough to have its own market, its own standard. Yes. And uh, so I think the collaboration among the operators, ta operators yeah. yes. and also manufacturers yeah. are very important for yeah. the... So Taiwan cannot miss the boat. Taiwan yeah. cannot miss <laughs> the, opportunity. the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to take another short break on the Taiwan Outlook, and we will come back shortly, and we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Paul Lin Bao Shu, who is the former Director General of the Information and Communications Research Laboratories here in Taiwan at ITRI. We'll be right back. Thank you.